So these are Banting. They're a wild species of cattle from Southeast Asia. Um, so a lot of times people walk by and go, oh, it's a cow, but they're just as exotic as tigers and elephants. They live in Southeast Asia, in um, Indonesia, um, Cambodia, Vietnam. So we have uh, four Banting here at the zoo. We have Oliver, the male. Uh, he's black in coloration with like white stockings and a white belly. So the males are usually a darker color and their horns are quite prominent and kind of meet in the middle on their forehead. And then we have three females. They're orange and kind of an orange-brown color. Um, those are Hope, uh, Flora, and Bentley. They are endangered. Uh, there are around 8,000 in the wild. We've been studying Bantang here at the St. Louis Zoo since actually the early 90s. And we studied them because at that time, no one knew anything about Bantang reproductive biology. And our job was to try and develop a technique for artificial insemination to produce offspring using frozen thawed semen. And we spent about a decade on it and we actually had the world's first Bantang calf born here in 1997 from that technology. One of the things that we are looking into with Bantang is that because of their level of endangerment and the fact that there's now, um, for several decades now, have been an, an initiative to try and exchange genetics between both zoos and the wild. Um, being able to have some re reproductive technologies that assist with that uh, make it much easier than, for instance, moving a cow from Southeast Asia all the way to the United States or Europe and vice versa. The other thing we've been doing is using these um, anklets. They're like, they're fitness trackers and they're similar to what you'd have a like Fitbit-like that I think all of us have on our wrists nowadays. Instead, these go on the ankle of the cow um, and they can, just like the, your Fitbit, they can tell you how many steps you've taken, um, how often you're lying down. They tell you um, how much time you spend standing and a general index of activity. We've been collecting um, hormone samples from the Bantang for several years um, to look at patterns of reproduction and then correlating that with activity data collected by the fitness trackers. Um, and we've been able to show that there are changes in activity um, around the time that a female would be most fertile and also right before she would deliver, so right prior to birth. And we also see changes in activity um, in the summer months when uh, hormone levels are highest which is uh, suggesting to us that Bantang have a seasonal component to reproduction. That's something new that hasn't been described previously. These particular fitness trackers are on loan to us from University of Missouri, Columbia, the Department of Animal Science, and they've been using them on beef cattle to look at what happens around the time that the cows are gonna be giving birth. So unlike the Fitbit that I actually wear on my wrist, the Fitbit-like device for cows, um, this particular model of fitness tracker isn't wireless. So we do change them out about every two months. We're collecting activity data on the Bantang um, 24 hours a day in 15 minute intervals and then our samples are collected three times a week and that's been going on for quite a while. So then we're able to put those two data sets together to see how the patterns of activity um, correlate with uh, their hormone levels over time. I can tell you that we collected over 60,000 data points in a year's time from these cows. We are excited that we have had some pregnancies. Um, we believe that one of our cows is pregnant now. We do have the ability to do ultrasounds. And so we have ultrasounded her and um, the hormones also look like she's pregnant. So fingers crossed, we'll have maybe some offspring soon.